Welcome back to Code Station 33. I am your instructor, Mr. McLaughlin. We're going to dive back in and talk about Arduino again. So this week, we are going to look at uh, digital pins. A digital pin is one of the outs on the Arduino device. It's one of those GPIO outs. And it sends out a signal, electrical signal, of 5 volts or no volts. So we use these to either read inputs or control in outputs. So the way it reads inputs is it can detect if there are five volts or no volts coming into the, um, the Arduino board. And the way it outputs is it sends out five volts or no volts if it's um, triggered to do so. So we need to set up these pins in code to tell the microprocessor, the microcontroller, that we want them to be either input or we want to be output. But what really is a digital signal? So a digital signal is either on or off. It's like a switch. It can't be partway in between. Um, it's just measuring like a zero or a one, turn on or turn off. But something that's not digital would be more like a dimmer switch. We're gonna take on many values. So the digital switch is either on or off. So for our cases, it's either gonna be five volts on or five volts off. And we're either gonna put five volts out or no volts out if it's an output. And if it's reading an input, it's either gonna be listening or looking for a five volt input or a zero volt input. And now that last part gets a little tricky. So in the different that's the difference between the digital input and the digital output. Now, that last part, the digital input, when we have a button and the button is just kind of sitting there open in the air just floating around, there's electricity. It, we often call it static electricity, or there might be electricity just in your body, or there might be electricity on the board. There is electricity, electrons, all around us. And that sometimes affects the button in that the button could take on some voltage. It may not be five volts, but it may be some volts. And the processor can get confused as to whether or not it's supposed to be detecting the voltage that's there. So maybe there there might be a static charge of one volt and the processor is confused and it says, well, there's some voltage there and it might flip back and forth between zero and one. It could kind of get confused. So to prevent that, what they have built into the Arduino processor is something called a uh, active low logic. And they use what's called an active low resistor. So what exactly is this thing, active low resistor? So first, let's talk a little bit about uh, current and resistance. Current is how fast the electricity moves through the wire or the resistor or the button or the LED. That's current. Voltage is how hard of a push it has. Now they are related. You know, as voltage goes up, we do increase current as well. You know, they're not totally independent. So you can't have a really, really high, super high current and then have no voltage at all. That doesn't work. So voltage does require some kind of push. There has to be some kind of push, but you can have situations where you have a very high current and very low voltage, like in a car battery. Car batteries have very low voltage, just 12 volts, but a very high current. Whereas if you're using two DC batteries put together, they have a very low current, but could still have a 12 volt voltage. So they could have the same push, but they're just not moving very fast because of the, it's just the battery. So current and voltage are, are a little bit complicated in that way. Fortunately for us, we don't have to dive too deeply into that. We'll save that for your physics class. But in order to solve the problem, what we're gonna use is something called a pull-up resistor. Now the pull-up resistor fixes the problem by setting the end of the resistor to five volts. So it connects it to a five volt power source. 
and this will reduce the current so we don't have to worry about any shocks happening on the board but it does keep the voltage around five volts so that idea of static electricity making a little bit of voltage won't matter anymore because the button itself when it's unpressed is five volts and when you press it the button closes and it goes to zero volts now that does create a bit of a logic problem when we start building our board in that it's kind of reverse of what you think when you press a button you expect the light to go on but with this when we press the button the light's going to go off and when we get let go of the button the light is going to go on now we can fix that we can do some fixing for that in code and we'll take a look at that so what we're really going to do let's look at some code here go through this uh, first we have set up a couple variables the first one is called button pin and it's the pin I'm going to connect the button to on the Arduino board so on the Arduino board there's a pin number two and I'll show you that picture so we have pin number two it's this blue wire here and it's connecting to the button so button pin two then LED pin is going to be on pin three. So let me show you the board again. Here's the LED pin and I'm going to connect it to pin three, but I'm going to connect it by way of a resistor. Remember we talked about using resistors. This is a 330 ohm resistor. So we don't burn out the LED because this five volts going to this resistor could burn out the LED. So we have this resistor in the way to remember it. In this case, it's going to reduce the current and reduce the voltage enough that it does not blow out our um, little LED there. So we have those two variables set up. That way, when we use our setup, which remember only runs one time, we're going to set the pin mode for the LED to output because we want the LED to turn on when it gets five volts and turn off when no volts are sent. So it's gonna be output, we're pushing five volts out. But the button pin really should be reading the data. And to make sure it doesn't get false values, we're gonna use this command where it says input pull up. So the input pull up is what ties it to that resistor that's gonna force it to either be five volts or zero volts. Five volts when the button is open, zero volts when the button is closed. Then we have our loop. The loop is really straightforward. This is the part that's gonna keep running over and over and over and over again. Uh, we're gonna get the button state. I created another variable here called button state. Now remember this variable here, button state is local to loop. That's the scope of button state. It's local to this loop. And we're going to assign it using the method digital read the value from the button pin. Now, the button pin is either going to read 5 volts or 0 volts. If the button is not pressed, it's going to be 5 volts. If the button is pressed, it's going to be 0 volts. So, in the next line, we're going to write to the LED the button state. So if the button is pressed, it's going to be zero. So we're going to write to the LED pin a zero, which is also low, which means off. If the button is unpressed, when we read this, it's going to say button state is high. So it's going to read that and send a high state to the LED pin, which will turn it on. So if we're not touching the button at all, it should turn on. So let's look again at our diagram here. This is the actual circuit. And in our circuit, there's a couple things that are a little bit new. First, we have these black wires. These three black wires are ground. And I'm taking advantage of this bar right here. Now, when I say bar, I mean bar because they're all connected horizontally. Now, remember, these are connected vertically. And there's a space in here where there's a gap between these, and these are connected vertically. You'll notice 
the button straddles these two sides because this half of the button is separate from this half of the button. So we could actually uh, be controlling another thing over here on this side. But for right now, we're only using one side of this button. So we're going to connect the bar to ground. Now, why would you do that? Well, because we only have this ground on the Arduino and these two grounds in the Arduino. So we have three grounds. In this circuit, that would be okay, but then we'd have like all these wires jumping across the board. To make it cleaner, we're just gonna connect to one ground on the board. So we should do that. We should always connect to this one ground here. Not to the power grounds over here, it should be this ground here. Then we're going to connect the ground side. Remember the difference on an LED? It's the cat though, because, you know, cats are kind of negative. So we're going to connect that to the ground side, which is this bar now. And then the other side of the button has to go to ground. And that's here. Remember, five volts or ground. Those are the two choices for the button. And that is going to um, all connect to this negative bar. So we're going to dive into... Um, Tinkercad and start building this circuit and see how it works. And then we'll talk about fixing the button uh, so the math works. So let's switch over to Tinkercad. So now we have our Tinkercad up. Remember, we're going to sign in. I'm going to sign in with Google using my school account. It remembers me, so it should sign right in. There we go. So I'm going to click on circuits. And I have created, um, mostly I've created this circuit here. So let's go in and take a look at it. Here it is, unit two, lesson four. I'm gonna click tinker this. So here we go. Um, the first thing you should do is find your Arduino board. We went over how to do that. You should get your resistor and your LED and your button. Those should be right at the top in your basic components. Now for the resistor, when you drag a resistor on, it's gonna give you this option to name it and to type in a resistance. We wanna switch this to ohms, which is this symbol without anything in front of it. And we want it to be 330. And that'll be the correct resistance for our LED in this case. Let me delete that because I already got one on the board. We're gonna put it here and here. If you look, it's channel 21 and 25 put it in those two channels our led you can when you click on it you can choose whatever color you want i chose yellow because i don't know i thought that might show up better but we could switch it if we want to blue blue is my favorite color so maybe we'll leave it as blue then we have our button here you can see it's in um channel 26 and row e right here at the edge and row f so we're sitting right there on the edge there and then I have these wires connected. Now, when you connect a wire, I wanna show you how to do this. You click in this first spot and then you can start moving the wire. But if I'm out here, it's kind of a straight line. If I want it to curve around, what I can do is click and click and click and click and click and click and click. And I can get the wire to follow any path that I want. And sometimes that's useful when you are trying to connect the wire to a weird spot and um, you want to make it clear what it's connected to. So I'm just going to connect it right back to there. Then when you click on the wire, you can also change the color. So some of these are different colors. The black we reserve for ground. We have our white there, which is typically either white or red is for power. So this one right here is either white or red. And then the blue um, we reserve for data. So you can see it, the blue line there is gonna be for our data because that's what we expect. It's reading input data from the button. But the colors really don't matter. The circuit doesn't care. They could all be the same colors. It's really just a way of keeping things organized. This is our negative bar that I talked about where these are all connected all the way along here. So we take the ground and connect it to the negative bar and then we're gonna connect the cathode, the negative side of the LED 
to the negative bar. We're going to have our resistor here on the other side, and then we're going to connect to pin number three. Then we're also going to connect our button to pin number two, just like we were talking about in code. And then we're going to connect our ground of our button to the grounding bar. And that's it for the connections for the Arduino. Now let's look at the code. This is the same code we had on there, but then I have this other thing here that's commented out. We'll talk about that in a second, but I'm going to paste all this code into the assignment. So you guys have it there um, to use and copy and paste. So now I'm going to start my simulation. Here we go, initializing. And you can see the lights on. Power's on, lights on. And when I press the button, the LED goes off. Let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. Press the button, LED goes off, let go, LED comes on. Now, I'm not sure why it goes off so slowly. In the real life, it would actually go off a lot faster. It just kind of happens to be going off really slowly here in the virtual. Could be com my computer's not fast enough, but that is how um, the code works. So now let's talk a little bit about, um, let me switch this over here, to what happens when we want it to switch, when we want to change the, the math here to make it work the other way. Well, it turns out we can do that. We can fix this just using some math. Now there's a new kind of math that you have to learn, a new operator, in order to understand how this works. So it, you might remember long division. And when you did long division a while ago, long division required you, let me just go to full screen here. Long division required you to do some a dividing a number into another number and if it didn't go in and evenly there was some kind of remainder like two divides into five two times but there's a remainder of one modular math just calculates the remainder so five mod two is one let me do that again. 5 mod 2 is 1 because the remainder is 1. So for our math here, we're going to put in this line of code and that will flip the button. Now, how is that going to flip the button? Well, let me show you. Our digital right is going to be the same. Then we're going to have our LED pin storing our variable, and then we're going to set this, whether it's high or low. So the way I'm, this is, is going to work, if this is an, a value has a value of one, one plus one is two. The remainder of two divided by two is zero. So that takes, in effect, switches the button state from a one to a zero. If we had a button state of zero, zero plus one is one. One divided by two, well, that doesn't go in at all. It just has a remainder of one. So again, that flips the button state. So we'll do a lot more of modular math as we go through, uh, but it's a really, really useful technique in computer science for manipulating numbers to allow us to make some logic controls that allow us to change things to make some kind of mathematical decisions for us so it's kind of cool so if we go ahead and put that in our code let me switch over Trying to find my window. Let me pause this to find my window. Okay, got it. So um, if we look at our code now and I uncomment this line, which is another useful technique for comments, 
you can take the comments um, in and out. Now notice I can't change the code, by the way. It's because the simulation is still running. You can't change the code when the simulation is running. So I'm gonna hit stop. Then we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna delete the comments. I and, pulled up some videos. I pulled oh, up some videos for you. <laughs> Sorry, my computer decided to talk to me. Uh, then I'm gonna comment out this line. So this line won't be working anymore. The computer will ignore this line and instead use this line. So I'm gonna close my code window and start my simulation again. And notice this time when it starts, it's still initializing, but when it does start, the button will leave the light off. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you see the buttons running, simulations running, but no light. Now when I press the button, the light goes on. So that's pretty cool. We've reversed the effects of the button and now it makes more sense. When you press the button, the light goes on. When you let go of the button, the light goes off. So in code, sometimes we have to manipulate things a little bit to get them to function the way we expect them to in the real world. Speaking of the real world, if you choose to uh, do this in the real, you can very easily connect all of these things to a real Arduino and upload the code that we talked about and it will work for real. You can turn an LED on and off or actually for that matter, anything else, a motor, uh, you might turn a switch or you might have a, uh, what's called a, um, a servo motor, which moves just a little bit to maybe open a door. So uh, this becomes a really powerful piece of code, just a button that sends a signal that changes something to turn it on and off, just like any other switch does. So that's it for today. I'll see you next time.